yesterday was just so dramatic. We were talking about this a little yesterday. It was part of what we were talking about that Trump learns stuff and he's learning how to be president. And part of being president is holding the Republican senators and congressmen's feet to the fire and saying to the people using the bully pulpit of the presidency to say to people, these guys promised you and promised you and promised you. And now they're not going to do it. And all they were trying to get is a vote to continue debate on health care in, in the Senate, to open debate on health care in the Senate. So John McCain, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. John McCain, who is in Arizona because he's got a brain tumor, right? And he's got this big, they had to take a blood clot out. So he's got this big scar on his face. He comes flying back to cast the vote for a bill he doesn't even like. He says he will not vote for it as it is, but he comes flying back. And essentially he makes the speech and talk about Shakespeare, right? The guy, the Senate, the institution of Congress was leveled by Barack Obama, by polarizing the country the way Obama did. The guy was supposed to bring the country together by making, putting the Republicans in a position where he would not negotiate with them and he would negotiate and then pull the rug out from under their feet. The only thing they could do was oppose him. And now the Democrats are fighting back, you know, turn around is fair play. Now all the Democrats will do is obstruct and oppose. There's no conversation between what used to be this collegial body. The, the people, people, the partisans, the people on the far left and the far right, always would get furious at the Senate because they would negotiate. They would you say, you're re reaching across the aisle, you're negotiating with the enemy, you know, and that, but that was the collegial Senate. That's how they got things done. That's gone. So here is this 80 year old McCain standing in the ruin of this institution that he loved and it's leveled. And it's just, if you picture it, it's really just like, you know, pillars lying on their side and dust everywhere, whole, you know, light coming in through the broken ceiling. And he makes this speech, this sad speech where he calls on them to be the Senate that he knew again. So here, let's let's play a couple of clips of this because it really was something. Let's start with uh, clip number six. Our system doesn't depend on our nobility. It accounts for our imperfections and gives us an order to our individual strivings that has helped make ours the most powerful and prosperous society on earth. It is our responsibility to preserve that. And even when it requires us to do something less satisfying than winning, even when we must give a little to get a little, even when our efforts manage just three yards in a cloud of dust while critics on both sides denounce us for timidity, for our failure to triumph. I hope we can again rely on humility, on our need to cooperate, on our dependence on each other, to learn how to trust each other again and by so doing better, serve the people who elected us. Stop listening to the bombastic loudmouths on the radio and television and the internet. To hell with them. They don't want anything done for the public good. Our incapacity is their livelihood. So the thing that I find so touching about this, and I, listen, I have plenty of you know problems with John McCain. He has always genuinely annoyed me as a politician. But I, I say this, it's it's rude to say it. I know we're supposed to say he's fighting can he's he's probably dying. You know, he's probably dying. He's a tough guy. He knows the score. He knows that like, like he's up against something where he's got something like I said, the survival rates for this the kind of brain cancer he has are, are in single digits he's in you know he's an old man he kn he knows what he's looking at he's not like sitting there thinking oh this is you know this is a, the best time of my life the best is yet to come he knows what he's doing this is his valedictory he came to say goodbye to the to the senate and it's really really moving now part of what's moving about it is is that he's speaking to an institution that no longer exists it's not that the senate doesn't exist but the senate that he talked about the news media that he talks about you know people on the right Obviously, he's striking out at uh, Trump with the lines about winning. And if you can't watch, if you're just listening, he makes a little quote, you know, scare quotes in the air talking about winning is we have to be beyond winning and all this stuff. But when he talks about the idiots on the radio, of course, you immediately go to the right wing. You immediately think of Rush and Mark Levin and, you know, all, all of us. I mean, a whole, the whole family of right wing commentators who are were, you know, Rush's children, as it were. But what he doesn't understand is, is that the front page of the New York Times is exactly the same. They're fighting back against the front page of the New York Times, which is just as biased. Look, I, 
I, don't, I do not pretend when you come here you are getting an objective version of the news. You're getting my version of the news. Rush does not pretend that he is giving you all the news that's fit to print. He is giving you the Rush Limbaugh version of the news. Same with Sean Hannity. The New York Times lies. They pretend that their front page is all the news that's fit to print. They say it right there, but it is it's just as biased as Rush, just as biased as Hannity, and worse because those guys are honestly giving you their opinion and the times is pretending it's the news so that's what's you know it's out of date to sit and strike out at rush to sit and strike out at sean or any of these guys you know that when you have a new you know McCain has always played to the New York Times. He's always wanted the New York Times to like him. So that landscape that he's talking about, he's standing in the ruin of it and making this farewell speech to an institution that's gone. And the, when he he calls out for civility, you know, it is just it's so touching because I'm sure they're all moved to hear about this. <laughs> but it's just not going to happen because Chuck Schumer is sitting on the other side and he's not going to do one damn thing to help, you know, uh, to help Trump get his agenda moving. So here's McCain's call for civility. Let's trust each other. Let's return to regular order. We've been spinning our wheels on too many important issues because we keep trying to find a way to win without help from across the aisle. That's an approach that's been employed by both sides, mandating legislation from the top down without any support from the other side, with all the parliamentary maneuvers that requires. We're getting nothing done, my friends. We're getting nothing done. And all we've really done this year is confirm Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. Our health care insurance system is a mess. We all know it. Those who support Obamacare and those who oppose it. Something has to be done. We Republicans have looked for a way to end it and replace it with something else without paying a terrible political price. We haven't found it yet, and I'm not sure we will. All we've managed to do is make more popular a policy that wasn't very popular when we started trying to get rid of it. So he comes, this ailing, you know, po probably dying senator, comes to make this valedictory speech, flies in, and through hook and by crook, they get together 50 votes, and they get this thing out there. And of course, Mike Pence casts the deciding vote. I mean, you can't, like I said, you can't make this stuff up. It's a tremendous, even though later on in the day, they voted down, they lost a, a vote, they, was, they never expected to win it on a repeal and replace. But but even so, this is a tremendous victory for Trump, a tremendous, uh, you know, uh, confirmation of what I was saying, that he is learning how to do this president thing, that this is the important thing that he does. It's not about, you know, tweeting. It's not about anything like that. But this is the important stuff he does. He wins. Trump wins. And then and then like a character in Shakespeare, his character flaws threaten his own victory.